Thank you for tuning in to Business School, the official podcast of the Dan Roberts Academy. Hello. So if those watching on YouTube, you'll get why I'm a little bit tired. I've just finished a 10K. I'm out in beautiful Bushy Park, my local park in, in Southwest London, a place called Soey, where I live. Now, uh, today's guest is the legendary, and I don't use that word often, personal trainer, Gunnar Peterson. Now, Gunnar's very well known for a number of reasons. Uh, he's been around for a long time and been one of the top celebrity trainers in LA for a long time, uh, looking after pretty much everybody. Uh, Sly Stallone for many years. Uh, he's trained The Rock, J-Lo, Kim Kardashian. Not a bad client base, all kinds of people. Um, I've had quite a few clients over the years train with him, they love him. Uh, trainers love him because he knows his stuff. He was the head of strength and conditioning for the LA Lakers a few years ago, did that for a few seasons, which is incredible. Um, and he's just a very knowledgeable and interesting guy and it was an absolute pleasure to have him on. Now, in today's conversation, I mean, I try to let him do all the talking rather than me, but uh, we talk about his, his career, how it's evolved, his philosophy of fitness, how that's evolved, um, his approach to training clients, be they super famous or not. Uh, talked about the change in the industry over the years. I mean, I started in the 90s. He started a few years before me and there's been a hell of a lot of change from the rise of social media, but also culturally about um, the world of training has changed quite dramatically. It's got a lot more professional, it's got more, a lot more competition and uh, even, you know, more reason why I'm so impressed with people like Gunnar and also my friend Ashley Borden, who's, who uh, kind of started roughly the same kind of time as Gunnar in the early 90s, to stay relevant for not just years, but for decades, particularly in the fickle world of celebrity training, is incredibly rare. And you can't just have a good PR agent. Actually, Gunnar doesn't have a PR person, never has, which I found particularly fascinating. It's about being good. It's about always remembering that you're there to serve as a trainer, uh, not being so focused on short-term brand building points that you forget that we coaches are here to help our clients. And we do that enough times, we build a solid reputation and uh, when we have a solid reputation, that's kind of like money in the bank. You know, that is the best way of running a business. Gunnar joked, I mean, he was half being serious, that he was terrible at, terrible at business. I don't think he is. I think he's smart because he's focused on the most important thing, which is his product. His product is the ability to coach and get great results. When you're great at that, it doesn't really matter if magazines write about you or not, or if um, some famous clients hire or not, you'll always be busy. Uh, when you have that quality and you have that respect. Um, yeah, so we, we chat about social media, we chat about training and qualifications and uh, the fact that he keeps on doing more qualifications, which I love. We get to see a side of Gunner, which uh, I think many of you will know from just following his social media, but he's a very humble guy. Uh, I mean, in fact, he spent an hour and a half with me just chatting and it's the first time we've met. You know, he's a very busy guy. I love, we talked about his routine why he gets up so early in the morning. <laughs> and it was just a really nice conversation. I, uh, I really appreciated the time with Gunnar. Uh, I do hope you take a lot from this conversation with him. Hopefully, if you're a trainer, you're inspired because he's a good person to look up to. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's start the conversation. What's going on? Hey, Gunnar. You got me? I've got you. I'm a tech <laughs> wizard. I am a tech <laughs> wizard. Ah. Oh! Hey, buddy, do you want to go straight into this or do you want me to prep you? All right, what are you going to... I got nothing to uh, I got nothing to hide, man. It's just... Uh, <laughs> wait, whatever you're going to get is what you're going to get. There's nothing you're going to tell me in a, in a prep. I mean, I, the only thing I would say is I don't, I don't ever talk about celebrities or put their names out there. When someone asks me a question about someone that it's known that I work with, no, I, I own that. that. Yeah, I own that. But, you know, like I don't say oh, I, I can't discuss that. I don't play that. I, I, you know, I go with it, but I stay off the celebrity stuff because I think that's them and their world and they can talk about it. And but other than that, I'm wide open to what's wrong. Cool. With it. That's we'll start there, actually. I mean, that's one of the things I really like about you, because I think so many trainers that kind of try to cash in on who they're working with and they trade off the, the sort of celebrity of their clients try and build their own career up and it's so naff and it's like I, you see it everywhere it, you see it everywhere and and so 
at first I used to go, why is that guy doing that? And I get all holier than now. And then I think none of my business. We have a different style, a different brand as I'm sure we do in training and, and that's them and that's not me. And, you know, I, the funny thing is I've had younger trainers ask me and I, I discourage them from doing that. And then later I see it, I think, ah, oh, they, I guess they choose not to hear, they chose not to hear that lesson, but fine. It's however you want to do it. You know, I'm like, look, I see some people that post nonstop about their celebrity clients and I never post about celebrities. I repost only because my thought is if they've put it out there, then that's fair game. But yeah. I have some pretty funny videos and clips and snapshots of people but I would never put those out there. I just think that's not mine to share. Look, I, I, I don't knock anybody else. If that's how people do it, go for it. That's just not my brand. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And, you know, years ago I had a, a famous athlete said to me, it's always better if somebody else says it about you than if you say it about yourself. Yeah. Well, that's what PR is, isn't it? Other people talking about you. <laughs> but, I, but also to be a hundred percent candid, I've never had a PR agent. Never once. Anything I've ever gotten in the press is because I return texts, I return emails, uh, I know how to speak in sound bites. I'm courteous, I'm polite. I, I don't, um, I don't bite the hand that feeds me, and and uh, that's I, I don't have anybody. I've had interviews with them, yeah, years ago, and they're like, "We can get you this." I go, "I have that." They go, "We can get you that." I go, "I have that." They go, "We can do this." I go, "I have that." But I think so, this is why you've done so well. That's why for people listening. People listening are coaches and gym owners who, you know, want to scale their business and grow. And I think sometimes the advice is so focused now on marketing and on sort of like self-promotion that people forget that actually integrity, being humble, being really good at your job actually is a better long-term approach to actually well, growing market, a brand. But you can you can market that. I mean, yeah. that's a that's a good thing. By the way, that's a good thing to put out in the market. Yeah. But if you're constantly talking about how great you are as a trainer or, or who you're training with, I think over time that falls on deaf ears because that's kind of the song being sung by everyone. I think if you're just a decent person and, and I don't want to dumb it down too much, but I get somebody that writes me and I write it back and they go, I can't believe you wrote me. I go, well, what do you mean? You, you wrote me. Why wouldn't I write you back? <laughs> well, I just figured you, I go, no, I'll write, you know, I try to answer DMS and, and little things. And I mean, I still get people who write me for my infomercial and they're like, I've had the ball and I lost the plug. And I go, that well, was just the, uh, the Brooke Burt core secrets back in the yeah, day. Well, the Gunnar Peterson core secrets. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I'm not taking credit for Brooks Wild on, um, <laughs> but but they'll say they say I lost the plug to the ball. Can you help me? And I'm like, that was 15 years ago, and <laughs> I I don't just sit here with a box of plugs. I mean, I'll write back something like, you know, uh, check out perform better or check out one of these sites. Or a lot of people sell relax the back used to be one. You, I'm sure you can find one or get another ball. I don't know what to tell you, but. And I go, I can't believe you wrote me back. I'm like, but you, you wrote me. So why wouldn't I write you back? I'm trying to help. But it, it's quite rare. I mean, you've got such a good reputation, not just like in the public eye, but behind the scenes amongst trainers. Like I know so many, like like Jay Cardiello, who I had a chat Jay's with a great on guy. my podcast. Great guy. He adores you. Henry um, adores he's, you. And also clients, um, which you've had, which I've met, adore you. So a lot of people sort of talk about you behind your back and it's always super positive, which isn't always the case with uh, well-known trainers. So Yeah, you hope that. Yeah. Uh, you know what I, I used to say? You, you can never say, and, I, and I'll never, I, I don't charge up front. I don't do packages and billing. I, I'm not that guy. And so my end goal, starting out, my, my uh, it morphed into my end goal was I never want, when I leave this, I never want people to say he was this, he was like anything bad. So I'd rather just be fair and, and, you know, let the chips fall. And as opposed to having people taking pot, people are going to take pot shots anyway. So I, I'd rather, you know, let them make up what they need to make up. But if they go back on it, they can't ever say he didn't bend over backwards to, to schedule me. He didn't, he didn't stay later. If I ran late, like I try to, accommodate all those things because i think that we're in the business to facilitate their quest for fitness 
So to sit here and, and just, you know, bang my gavel and this is the rules of the gym and, you know, <clears throat> this is our policy. I don't, I don't play that. To me, policy is a word people hide behind when they don't want to use gr critical thinking. Well, that's the policy. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I, I don't understand that. Well, that's our policy, but but I'm here. No, it's our policy. So I don't. I try not to play any of those games. Just got to keep it real. Look, at the end of the day, it's training. It's not. It's not more. It's not less. But it's let's not gas ourselves up so much. So when did you get into? When did you start being a coach? Because you've done it for a while. Thirty years ago. <clears throat> Thirty years. I'm in year thirty-one. Nice. Yep. I mean, yeah. I started in ninety-three. Yeah. So, so I was, I was one. 90, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And what was, yeah, when you first how, got into how, it, how, why, how, why did you get but, into but it? But wait, but how come you're not aging? <laughs> drugs, lots of drugs, <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of drugs. Um, you so go. when you got into, I know for me, when I got into it, it wasn't for, I didn't want to, my, my rationale has changed over the years. Like initially it was quite sure. selfish. I just didn't want to have a boss. And I love the idea of just hanging out with different people and going and just do my own thing. And fitness yeah. happened to, you know, I was quite into fitness, but I just like being around people. That, that was for me. And over the years, it's changed. And I've got a philosophy and stuff. I mean, how about you? Did, why did you get into it? And how's that changed? Uh, I was a fat kid. And when I realized that I could control my fatness, when I thought, when I, when I figured out if I do this in the gym... I make a couple little concessions here and there with food or alcohol or going out or it, I'm actually in control of this. I'm not a victim. I don't have to mm. just, you know, sit around and bitch about having bad genetics. I can go, wait, I know how to fix this. And as it started to change, I wanted to tell everybody, Hey, 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 look at this. You don't have to be trapped like that. Remember two years ago when I was that look and, and I kind of still feel that way. Like I hear people talk about, you know, it's hard when you travel. I'm like, really? I mean, <laughs> sure, it's a challenge, but is it hard? Like, no, you just do it. I, I don't know. It's yeah. You can you could argue it from either side, but I, I'd rather not. I'd rather not take the side of how difficult it is. I'm always going to, you know, not just as the glass half full, rather than half empty, but it's half full with you know my favorite beverage. So uh, I'm going to take that side of it. So when I could do that and share that with people that was exciting and when you had people who were like really i'll i'll do it with you then it became a client base and it grew from there i think we're very interesting for people listening like who are quite new into the industry like how like your first kind of job in fitness what what were you doing were you working in a gym cleaning weights were you training no people i was about no I, I was working at a talent agency and i was okay. going to the gym every morning early and i would train with different friends you know 5 36 a.m kind of thing early then That's, like train we we asked to be like training partners now and stuff. we were working we were working out yeah yeah uh and you know those early morning training partners don't always last as long as you might like them to <laughs> and you know you spend your time going is this guy coming uh, should i start uh, and I had had somebody, you know, not show up one morning and, and a guy stopped me on my way out of the gym and said, Hey, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to work out with you. I see the gym all the time. And I said, and I kind of looked him up and down, like, this is, could this be a training partner? Are we like similar in, in strengths, weaknesses, whatever, you know, you're trying to do like the quick Terminator scan. Da, 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 <laughs> yes. No. And I said, uh, yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, no problem. So, but I go early and he said, yeah, that's great. And I said, okay. Uh, and he said, what do you charge? I went, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know. Um, and, and a buddy said, you, dude, you got to do that. So you, so you, and I did it and then trained his friend. And then I had a woman at night. So I was going in there cat and mouse in this gym. Cause I wasn't a trainer Yeah, and, uh, Pretending like, not to train. Well, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? I've done that. Yeah, I mean, I. By the way, I can't. That's not. I couldn't do that for. That just feels. So, it's such bad use of my energy because my energy that should be spent more on the client. I'm spent looking like it's like yeah. oh, my set, my set. <laughs> like I'm pretending. So, um, and then I train somebody at night after work, and then after I don't know, couldn't have been that long. I realized with these three people 
three times a week, I'm making more than I'm making at this other job, working 40 plus hours a week. I'm out of here. So is this like <laughs> early 20s, is it? No, like late 20s. Late 20s, okay. Yeah, I was already out in LA. Um, so it just became that. And then I would, if, then I would tell people like, you know, I knew a chiropractor and I knew different people around and they'd say, Oh my gosh, my friend's looking for a trainer. Or, you know, I should send you this person. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm driving to houses and, and I mean, I had read, by the way, in, through college, I read a ton about it and I was caught up and fascinated with bodybuilding, fitness, anything so did, that can I ask, did you study like exercise science at college? Oh, I studied French and Spanish at Duke. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Isn't that what all trainers study? <laughs> no, but what I got out though, I literally was a voracious reader of anything and everything I could get. And yeah. I'd go back, I'd go back from anything fitness, anything health. I'd read everything that was current. And then I start look for back issues or older books. And, and I was trying to reverse engineer the whole process. And then I was driving all around town for two years doing this and kind of honing my thing. And all the while, being able to spend extra time in the gym for myself. So I improved. Um, and then I started taking seminars and I thought if I'm going to do this, I should get certified, but I kind of stayed on the outskirts of it. I, I didn't want to say I'm a trainer. I just felt like, I felt like at the time I might be selling myself short. I had, I had bigger fish to fry. Clearly I didn't. Um, <laughs> But I'm from a different, my, my family are, they're business people and they're very, very wildly successful financially. So the, that I'm never going to be that. Um, but I like what I do and I think they like what I do. So in the end, it worked out. But I, I went to, uh, I went to fill in the gaps, right? Through education. So what, after who I'm did already, you study with or what, what kind of seminars did you go to? Anything I could. Uh, Vern was, Gambetta. Was this in the 90s, is it? Or early in the 90s? This is in the 90s. So it's like Paul Check and... Paul Check. I took Paul Check seminars. Yeah. Uh, I flew to Chicago for Vern Gambetta. Uh, oh, cool, yeah. Mike, Mike Clark, uh, Mike Boyle. I, I literally went to anything and everything I could. Um, I bought all the NSCA cassette tapes. They're, now we're dating. Uh, and I listened to them in my car as I drove to my client. And... And I then took the NSCA CSCS course. Yeah, yeah, I've got that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Past that. Um, I, I kept going. I just, the more I could, the more, I mean, I did anything and everything. I it's took funny. No, one ever asked, no one's ever asked me about all I did for like 15 years was like study nonstop and get so many letters off my name. Not one client has ever asked me what qualifications yeah. I've got. No one cares. And I have some yeah. of the certs framed and I used to keep all of them in a binder of every workshop and you know you get the certification at the end of the workshop because it adds up for continuing education credits yeah. and i had a binder like this of them and i'm like ah, people are like no who cares i thought all right fair uh and i still do it by the way i still i still read it and 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 process it and, and devour it i i don't know it's weird i literally wake up thinking about it so it tells me i'm doing the right thing in any way yeah so tell me about your yeah. philosophy of fitness because obviously one would hope it's evolved since you are like 29 totally. yeah because you've yeah. got more skills and experience so now how would you describe your philosophy i know it's a bit of a weird open-ended question but uh, my philosophy is based on consistency right be consistent a little bit all the time is better than a shit ton every other weekend uh, that's just not the way to to build refine hone develop a physique if we're talking about physique stuff and it's also not going to be the way to help you improve athletic performance and it's also um, so, so I did this in LA, right? LA, the physique is important, then performance, and then we get to health. Yes. Yeah. Remember, remember my zip code. <laughs> a little bubble, uh, a little bit different yeah. from this world. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe. Um, it is funny when you talk to people about, yeah, but health wise, that that's not going to work out long term. Yeah, but that'll get me. And I go, <laughs> yeah, but long term. Yeah, I don't care about that. And I said, okay, I got you. I hear you. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, um, I just, I, uh, my philosophy, first of all, you got to take them case by case, right? Because what I want to do 
how I want to approach it with one person is not going to necessarily apply to another person. Um, it's about being consistent. It's about forming good habits, um, habits stacking. If you ever read that book, Atomic Habits by James mm -hmm. Clear, he talks about stacking. And, and to me that it resonated because I'm like, he's a genius because I do all of that already. Uh, so, but that's how I, I try to get them. You know, there's another quote actually in that book. Let's just make this about James Clear's book. Uh, there's another quote in that uh, the number of times you do something is more important than how long you do that thing for. And, and I think that too. So the people who, Hey, I'm running late, you know, should we just bail and, and I'll come in Wednesday? I go, no, get in because you're grooving that habit. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the philosophy. Be consistent. Um, shore up the weaknesses. Don't just train your strengths. Um, you know, it's, it's the, the eat your vegetables first type of thing. And uh, try to shoot for 100% in everything, fitness, nutrition, hydration, sleep, stress management, supplementation. If you, you'll probably end up at somewhere in the 80s if you do that. But if you give yourself that hall pass out of the gate and you just shoot for 80%, you're probably going to end up somewhere in the 60s. And that just doesn't end well. It doesn't look good. So, you know, it's like I was just telling this to a guy today that I worked with. Uh, younger, uh, I don't want to say kid because he's a young man, but I said something about, he said, I almost had to cancel today. And I go, really? He goes, I mean, you know how it goes on the weekend that I go, no, I don't. <laughs> and he goes, what do you mean? And I said, we have a thing in our family where we say never late, never cancel, never quit. And he goes, yeah, but that's unreasonable. And I said, that's funny. That's what most people say. I go, it's totally unreasonable. But if you shoot for that, you do each one less. If you always know in the back of your mind that you have that cancel card and you can whip it out real quick, you're probably going to use it. If you think I can't cancel, I can't cancel, I can't cancel, you're going to do it a lot less often. So if I can and also as coaches, we have to set the standard. Like, I mean, I can't think the last time I ever rearranged a client because of my own personal shit. I, Never. I can't remember. I don't think I've ever can't done do that. You know, can't it's like well, I mean, can't. I, if I have somebody and I'll say, hey, maybe I did this actually today. I said to someone, uh, I, ha I I may be able to do Saturday morning. I'll, le I'll let you know. And, and she wrote back two days later, Saturday morning would be great. And I said, stand by because I was still waiting. I wasn't sure my wife's traveling. Yeah. And, and then I said, I wrote her back and I said, hey, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm on dad duty. I have to take my son to soccer. So I went into the gym this morning, you know, five to seven, came back home, eight, took my kid to soccer, then got back to the gym by 1030 and saw clients up until I see you. So that's, I don't see that as rearranging my schedule on her. My schedule was still in flux and I did, hmm. I was clear, but I would never rearrange my stuff for theirs. You're, you are in a service industry. And I think this is lost on a lot of trainers. Serve. You are not better than this. Serve. Hand them their water. Put the towel out for them wipe up after them think ahead if they're going to need to sit down when they come up off of some you know grueling push-up mountain climber climber combination go like this sit it's right there hang tight and and give them a place to go when they're getting like this don't watch them drop and then go oh, yeah, i should have told you you were going to do that you should might want to sit on the thing you have to be ahead of them you have to be serving them and i have people that go that's ridiculous you know they should do all that for themselves i go oh, maybe I don't see the field that way. I see it personal training. I see as a service industry, strength and conditioning coach may be different. I did that as well. I still try to, to, you know, braid them right a little bit. I wanted to make that. I wanted to give those athletes that feeling. There are high end professional athletes. I want them to feel the same service they get at a five-star restaurant. I love that. It's actually funny. It reminds me, I was, uh, I'm friends with Ashley Borden, who I think you know as well, right? Ashley? You're, you're, Ashley yeah, Borden? I know Ashley Borden. Yeah, yeah. Love her. Yeah, me too. I've we're, known her. Well, yeah. she and I were at a gym uh, together <laughs> late 90s and early 2000s uh, before I started my own gym. Yeah, it had to be late 90s because I've been open for longer than that. But yeah, we had... Uh, we, we she's been on my year. show a couple of times um, yeah, and we were chatting about this thing saying quite often when trainers, they get a little, they start off wanting to serve, they get a little bit of success. Maybe they train someone famous or they get 
shape right about them. And sometimes it goes to their head a little bit and they forget that they're still a trainer. And I think it does. It's so refreshing to hear someone like yourself, who's like you have- literally the top of the game, who's still like, I want to serve. Oh, you have to. Did you see that? Well, so two things over there. Did you see that movie a thousand years ago with Jennifer Jason Lee, single white female? I can't remember it, but I'm sure I did. I love films. So it's where the one person, because they're close to the other person, sort of assumes the identity oh, yeah, of the yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sometimes see that with with people, you know, young new assistants to someone famous, and they start kind of developing a diva attitude or yeah, something, and, yeah. and and you're like, you're like, I'm sorry, you're not the star. You're the gatekeeper, the middleman. Please don't speak like that. You have to check them and and. It doesn't happen often, but you do see it. And I think trainers the same way. They they start acting like she canceled on me. I'll never train her again. You're like, sure they cancel on you. It happens. They get they get pulled into a meeting. I mean, if, could you imagine if you're a dentist and somebody cancels the appointment? I'll never clean that guy's teeth again. I'm done with him. Like you can't well, operate it, your life like that. It's that the people who are successful don't really talk like that. It's the ones who kind of want to make out they're successful, like they're in charge. Yeah. Yeah, you know? the people um, below, the people just below title, act a certain way because they think that's how the people above title are supposed to act. And you're like, they don't. The people, the biggest stars, the ones who's above title names, are always to me and, and always have been the easiest. Here's my cell. They text you direct. They schedule their own. That, that's been my experience, Gunnar, as well. Like the the yeah. really famous people I've worked with have been totally cool. It's the ones yeah. who are like think them more the famous cusp. than they are. <laughs> They're right on the cusp. They're on the cusp. Yeah. So they start acting. And you're like, why are you acting like that? You don't, don't that, be that way. That's when I have to talk to their PA, where normally, yeah, yeah it's funny how yeah. that happens, isn't it? It's yeah. ego. Well, I, guess. I mean, I'm sure psychology, there's some name for it. But if you look at that movie, Single White Female, there's a bit of that. And then you're like, you're not the person who should, nobody should act like that. But you're definitely not the one who should be acting like that. Yeah, it's funny. But, but I don't look, have, you- I, I don't get a ton of that. I mean, you, I mean, we bring it up, but really that's, you know, one out of 20. Yeah. I think after a while, though, when you've been established, you kind of attract the kind of clients who kind of get your vibe. You know what I mean? Like, we haven't talked before, but just from, like, social media people talking, you kind of get what you're about, even though I have got no idea really about your protocols of, of how you teach a deadlift or a bicep curl. It's kind of irrelevant. I kind of – you can kind yeah, well, of get someone's vibe, can't you? I'm, kind so of I'm sure asshole. the people who want to work with you get what you're about. So you're not you're not going to have complete divas because you won't stand for it. But but I don't not stand for it by saying, "Hey, you can't talk to me like that." I, I get like no, I'll but just you won't bury... as well, would you? I mean, no, 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 for sure not. But I, yeah. at first, I'll I'll check you on it in a funny way, and then I'll probably bury you in sarcasm, and uh, <laughs> you know, and, and we'll find our way, or we won't. Now, one of the things I've learned for me as I've kind of gone through this career, like I started off as an SNC coach, then I moved more towards entertainment industry clients. And I found recently, like, I'm learning way more of my clients and I think they realize, like the CEOs I work with, I learn about organization, some of the creative people, like musicians I've le- learned a lot from, from when I see someone like create an album from scratch and I see them sort of pour their heart into it for like eight months and it's done. That's kind of inspired the way I kind of run my career now, where I try and focus on one big project a year and put all my effort into it. And my point is, I try and learn from my clients all the time. And all day. They constantly teach me. How about you? I mean, all imagine you work with some crazy, incredible athletes and superstars. It's quite a privileged position to be around these crazy, successful people. What have yeah. you learned over the years? That, that, so that's the question you get. How do you decide who you work with? And I go, well... I like people who work hard. Yeah. I like people who are coming with a reason. And I don't mean a reason like drop 20 pounds by May 1st. I, that's not what I mean. I mean, like, like they are, I'm not a motivator. I don't think as a trainer, if I have somebody who's making, you know, 20 million a film or 20 million a season and they've decided not to work out, I don't know what you think I'm going to say to them <laughs> on the phone that they're going to go, yeah, he's right. I got to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, that's just not how it works. So I, I want to create an environment that draws them in and makes them want to come back, right? Make it accessible, make it 
uh, show value, um, make it attractive. And, and then when they're in there, I like the people that, that are bringing something to the table that are highly achieved. I love whether it's a musician, whether it's an actor, whether it's a business person, um, any of those people, you, you, like you just said, you can get, you can learn. So I learn from them every single day, how they handle in every respect, how they handle parenting when they travel, how they handle uh, business, how they handle switching off from one project to another transition. There's so many things to get from that. If you just shut up and stop, you know, telling your little stories, just you throw something out. I don't pry. I will say I'm not a big question guy. Um, you know, how are you? How is this? How, how are your kids? What's your kid's name? What's your aunt's name? I don't do that. But I, I open it up and, and then sort of let it happen. And, and it's great. You mean you develop decent relationships. You do, you, you meet good people and you can bring that home and, and your life gets better because you learn from them and you see, you come to a crossroads in your life and you go, Oh, I've seen this movie before. I remember when this so-and-so blah, blah, blah. And, and then you make better choices because you were already armed with the answer. Has anything kind of been, has anything you've learned sort of shocked you or surprised you just from exposure to the kind of people you work with and, Oh my God, that's the way, I don't know, maybe like light bulb, light bulb moments. At all. Yeah. Yeah. And it's both ways. I would say I've learned that some of them, don't read anything about themselves mm. at all, good or bad. And I, and I don't know how they do that. I mean, I honestly hats off. You, I don't know. Like if I, if I get a sour comment and in, on Instagram, I go, how dare you? Why would you write that? That's unfair. And yeah. my, my wife's like, honey, laugh about it. And then I have some other people, they go delete it, block the person. And now I've taken a different approach. I just like the comment. Um, <laughs> and then I've, <laughs> I, mean, I think that person is annoying them even more. <laughs> yeah. He liked that. Uh, <laughs> and then I have others who read absolutely everything about them. Good, uh, bad. They dissect that can't it. Be healthy. I don't know because some of them that I know, they dissect it and they, they try to become introspective. And is that true? And do I come across that way? Well, I must come across that way. Is it, is that, is that good? Is that bad? Is that, is that just one person? Is it polarizing? And you, you hear them. And I think to me, that sounds like a lot of energy spent, but again, for them, it's just another way of honing their brand. And mm. I think it's, I, I, I struggle with that. I would struggle with that if I were in the public eye like that. Um, for me, just the social media stuff is, is a lot. It's a lot. Like I, I just can't, I don't want to, like, I want to go, why? I, I would never, it, it would not occur to me to write a critical or nasty comment on someone's post. I would either scroll by or stop looking at that person's post. But to stop and go, you know, wait a minute. <laughs> I would I just don't understand what you get out of that. No, I mean, no, I, I, I can't imagine doing that either. I think people who are busy and doing what they love, they don't really have time to critique other people. I don't know. I, I see know. some people. I don't I really get, I, do, I don't have that much of a following, so I don't really get many comments at all, let alone hate. So I don't. Yeah, have but your problem. your stuff is your stuff on Instagram is hilarious, hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I've actually commented. I've actually commented on you some have, of your yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. It's normally being incredibly sarcastic. That's why. <laughs> well, by the way, and I. I knew someone in my past he used to say everything sarcastic with you. I go with me, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's the lowest form of what I go. It is. And I mean, <laughs> I find it to be hilarious. So when I read some of those, I remember one you did I'm so, so crazy that I would remember of all the Instagram posts I read, you did one and I did not cheat. I did not prep for this. I'm straight off the cuff. You did one that was like, things people will like about you if you're a trainer or things to do as a trainer. And it was like a list of things. It was a top 10. Oh, the cliched. Oh God, oh, I was yeah. dying. I was like, this is, <laughs> this, this needs to be shouted. Everyone needs to hear this. Yeah. It's, uh, it's so. funny because it's so true. There's so many cliches knocking about, you know? Yeah. And like yeah. trainers now, I mean, 
the trainers listening to this podcast obviously know what I'm about, which is all about, you know, being good for the first 15 years rather than worrying about your PR and then worry about building a business later rather than spending half an hour photoshopping a Gandhi quote on your abs. I don't is know that- how to Photoshop anything. Sorry. It's all <laughs> I can do. It's all I can do to get the picture to fit in there. Wait, I'm going to tell you something. You just, you just made me think of something. And also because you told me how long you've been doing this, which is interesting and, and refreshing. Uh, <laughs> I, I took a kid who, I mean, he, he whatever he had, 5,000 people kind of thing. Uh, nice kid. And, and I saw promise in him and I took him in, right. Uh, let him stay in my guest house, let him train out of my gym, funneled him tons of people, introduced him all around, including to brands I work with thinking I could maybe give him a leg up. Hmm. Because I don't remember like specific ones. I have people who do nice things for me all the time, but it's usually like I'm in the right place at the right time. And they go, yes, yes. Oh, I'm here for you. And I go, wow, great. It's, but, I, but I'm not like, I'm not, uh, you know, jockeying them to get stuff all the time. But this guy was around and, and I brought him in on some things and I brought him in on this, uh, on an event I did, a training event for like 30 writers. So you knew it was going to get press. It was for a great, great brand and we took all the stuff down laid it out you know we packed the car up took it all down to venice laid it out did this event hung out spoke after lovely writers great people and then you know had to pack the car up and and just how i am i packed the car up and i went back to the gym and i trained five people that's just i'm not going to go hey now's the day you know i'm going to kick it off for the day and as we're loading the car he said to me, God, I wish I had come up uh, when you did. And I said, what do you mean? And he goes, it's just so much easier then really? than it is now. <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, sarcasm. No social sarcasm. Media. <laughs> sarcasm. So I said to him, I literally was loading stuff into the back of the car. I go, well, why, why did he think it was easier? Well, because he saw that I knew those people, but this is also a brand relationship that I had nourished for well over a decade. <laughs> the writers whose calls I had returned, bang, bang, bang. Hey, Gunnar, I'm on a deadline. Can you help me with this? I need two movements for the triceps. Can you, can you give me something just not basic? Like, I don't, I just don't want kickbacks yeah. and extensions. And, and I go, <laughs> got you, bang, bang, bang. And I send them something. So I've, I've earned that. And I get there and they go, gee, what's up? And it's hugs and, and we all tear it up in a workout. And and I'm, I'm sort of reaping that, but I'm also paying back into it by prepping and laying out a fun, entertaining workout, uh, servicing the brand, servicing those p- relationships. And I guess he saw that. And I don't know if it was frustration, jealousy. I don't know. Not my problem. But, he, but the fact that he immediately assumed it was because I had rolled through these easy years and now I'm like kicking back on my, first of all, it was all my equipment. I had designed the workout. I mapped out the space. Like, Give me some credit. And I said, how is it easier then? I said, no one had a cell phone. Didn't exist. Yeah. They had answering machines if they had answering machines. And if not, you had to catch them. There was no place to get your face out there unless you were the guy putting flyers under car windshields at the mall. There was you know, you're handing business cards out, kind of slimy. There was no way to do it. You have social media. There were no, there were one-tenth the amount of fitness facilities around there was one-tenth the amount of information and, and people misinformation. weren't hiring trainers as commonly as they are now it was a smaller industry and, yeah correct and a lot of people didn't care about it yeah. now everyone cares it's everywhere you have if you have a solid uh, uh position in the field you know quality rises to the top you should be able to you should be able to, to make your mark. Not only that, I'm walking you right in. Like, come on. And it was just a funny thing. So when you say that, uh, the social and that, I mean, it cuts both ways. I, I don't hate, I've heard other trainers that I know, you probably know them too, hate social media, hates it. And I go, wow, that's so much energy and <laughs> venom spent on that. Like, then get off it. How about that one? You know, that's an easy one. But I mean, I, uh, personally, I... I- I, I don't hate it. I don't love it, but I, I find it hard to take it seriously because, but also I don't really need it because 
I'm busy. I've always been busy. I so. I love it. I find it interesting really? to. I find it. It's pure entertainment. Well, actually, you know what? In fact, there's a lot of good information out but there. But do you there's use it of... to like sell your products and stuff? No, no, no. I'm not a big. I'm mean, look. Let's just lay the cards on the table. <laughs> I'm a great father. I'm a pretty good husband. I'm a shit businessman. You can't be that like, shit. That's probably going to be on my epitaph. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why would you yeah, say that? Is. You can't be that shit. I, I am. You're like I literally am. the I, most famous trainer in the world. You can't be that bad. How do you monetize that? <laughs> it's hard to do. <laughs> like I, I'm still trying to look. I'm the guy. I was still in the gym today, Saturday, kids soccer, race to the gym, race back. I like it. I don't hate it. I have no animosity towards it. I love the business. I love the time with the people, but I don't, I've seen, and my wife will, she'll laugh because she says this. There are trainers who have done less, who know less, who are less affable, likable, uh, educated, probably sitting at their beach house right now, retired with, you know, winning yeah, finan fi thing. financially. Yeah. Correct. It is. I, I, I don't. So, so my point is uh, the business part of it. I, I never got into this to be a businessman. I got into this because I was a fat kid who learned how to control his body. And now all of a sudden I wasn't terrified when the, the real life incarnation of our PE class shirts and skins came about. And I went, Oh, Oh, and I used to panic. I used to panic about shirts and skins days. I'm like, shirts and skins. Shirt. Oh, I got to get in front of this kid. And it was that. I don't have that anymore. I don't, I'm not, you know? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to share that because it's powerful. It's powerful when you can, controls are onward, but when you feel like you're in charge of, in fact, any aspect of your life, but definitely when you're in charge of your your physique or your look or that's a powerful thing. And if I can give that to people so they don't stress about it, you know, it's like plastic surgery. Isn't that terrible? He got a nose job or she got a boob job. As I go, why can you imagine looking in the mirror and, and hating that or being insecure about that every single day? If I get a pimple, I'm like, I stress. What if that pimple were your nose and that's mm. just all day, every day, that's all, every picture of yourself you see, every time someone looks at you funny, even though they're looking at past you, you are self-conscious, dude, do whatever you need to do. So if I can help that feeling and, and, and squash some of that in the physical, let me help. Let me let ask me show you. Show you. Something that's interesting about your career you, um, I think it was what three years ago. Or so you took on a job at LA Lakers, right? Head strength and conditioning, the Lakers. Yeah. Uh, How did you? It was, it was four. Yeah, I did it for three years. I did it for three years, and and I haven't done it now for a year. And and this season, yeah. We want really... we want to we want a ring. The, the Lakers want a ring, and I was I was out after that. I mean, why not? But what really impressed me about that, I was trying to put myself in your shoes when you did it, because I've been basically self-employed all my life and when it, in the beginning of my career when I was working as an SNC coach there was a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of stuff and then I couldn't wait just to do my own thing but I can't the idea now because I've been offered SNC like gigs in the last 10 years and the idea of going back to that kind of environment doesn't really appeal to me at all the idea of being told what to do because there's systems and there's bureaucracy and do you know what but I mean I well, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, how did you, how did you handle I, I that did. just on a personal level? I didn't then. When I got in, uh, I, I sat in a room with uh, Rob Polinka, Magic Johnson, and Luke Walton. And great meeting, great everything. And they offered me the job and I had autonomy and it was cool. And I got to do what I wanted to do. And, and we did well. We had terrific buy-in. Every dude there that came through, even guys coming up, you know, through and, and onward from the G League, um, vets that we got, it was just, uh, it was a terrific experience. And they all bought into what I was selling. I mean, I don't really sell, but you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to stay with the so buy-in analogy. Did you have like a junior team of SNC coaches you were overseeing as well? Had two guys with me. Uh, Great guys, Chatton Hill, Ed Strite. Ed's running it now. Um, great, 
savvy. Like we were a team and I said, there's like head of the department, all those titles and all that stuff. I really don't care about that. I said, the way I see it is we are a three headed monster and all, all I, I don't care who's training who all I care about is that all these guys get as many lifts in as they can. So that they stay as strong as they can. So that come playoffs come and you know, if we start 10 and 0, not impressive. If we finish 10 and 0, super impressive. The whole thing of injuries at the end, and we did not, you know, injuries were minimal. Um, it was great. It was just a great experience and time to go. I actually just signed another. So that was my, my experience in the corporate. When it got a little corporate at the end, I was like, this probably isn't for me anymore. So time to go. Such a cool uh, experience. Incredible experience. So cool. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, incredibly impressive as well. I mean, uh, it, it's, it really is. People don't realize, you know, they go, oh, that's not a hard job working with pro athletes. I mean, they know how to train. They've got great bodies. I'm like, really? Yeah, really? Come on down. Spend three days and see what also, you do. Also, the standard uh, of, I mean, you know, we've both been in this for a while. I remember when I started off, the, the standard of training was so pretty, was so low. Everyone's much primitive. better now. Even like when primitive. I started working with athletes back in the sort of 90s, the training was disastrous just because I did a little bit of reading and a few courses. I was like better than everybody. But nowadays right. the standard is so much higher, right? I mean, yeah, there are some really solid guys throughout yeah. the NBA. Um, Everyone's got massive throughout. degrees or in, in England, like soccer is like obviously the big sport, like all the SNC coaches who look after the premier league football teams. They've all got PhDs in kinesiology right. and sports science. And it's right. like, it's, it's hard, you know, it's, yeah. you know, you've got to be right up there. You've got to be incredibly good academic as well as have the experience. Yeah. Somewhere along the line, um, someone within the owner's group probably figured out that the connection between what they do in the weight room and what they do on the field and how often they're in the athletic training room, there's a, there's a real connection in that triangle. And um, that's when I think, some light was shed and, and value was seen and yeah it was great it was a great great gig so when you're doing that you were still doing because your day-to-day -day job is still personal training like one-on-one -on -one clients were you still yeah, seeing people in the evening and oh yeah i'm still up at 3 45 in the morning going Whoa. to my gym i what i'd see yeah that's 30 years of that man uh except when i did back, my back book <laughs> you get up at 3 45 yeah, but when I did my book, I got up at 3.15. And let me tell you something. 3.45 is easy. 3.15 is the middle of the night. <laughs> I would, well, that, why do you get up so was, early? Wait, I what time do you get to bed? That's a great question. At I mean, p.m. <laughs> I would love that. Uh, <laughs> it could be 8. It's probably closer to 9. Let's be real. It's 9.30. If it's after 10 or 10.30, it's just rough. It's just rough. And I know that I short my sleep and I know that's the one aspect of my health that probably in the last five years I put the most work into developing better sleep habits. But um, it's tough. There's just too much great stuff to do out there. When I was doing my podcast with Jay, he was great. He did like a 25 minute speech about importance of sleep. And he was asking me about mine. And I go to bed about half one in the morning every yeah. night and I get up around about half five. I just don't sleep. And he was, wasn't yeah. happy with me at all really wasn't yeah. happy i promised him i'd try a bit longer but I, I think it has to link for your lifestyle like my wife is a musician and she works late and we don't have kids so my right. clock is kind of adapted to hers because i want to hang out sure. with her so right. if i had like a five-year-old kid i'd probably go to bed at eight o'clock but you have to just like work whatever is in your lifestyle but uh yeah yeah and if you don't if that fits in your life it's great i, I don't yeah. look i did i did 12 years of maybe a little more of of three, four, five hours sleep. That's just rough. It takes a toll. I mean, I, I look tired. I feel tired. Um, mechanically, I'm off a little bit. Mental acuity, I'm off. Uh, it's just, I'm best, I'm just better when I sleep more, but I, you know, and I'm working on it. So don't judge me yet. It's not pencils <laughs> down yet. Uh, so, so yeah, with the Lakers, it was that it was, I'd go still yeah. early in the morning and then I'd go down to the facility and I'd be there until, 1 30 ish and i'd come back if we didn't have a game and i'd get back to the gym and i'd see like a 2 33 34 30 client and then i'd go home if we did have a game i'd go back to the gym and see one person and then i'd go down to staples center and i'd be there till 10 30 10 45 depending who wanted to lift post game and then uh still get up early and that starts to take its all too but the travel schedule 
takes you completely out of that game. And people are like, oh, it's got to be easy on the road. It's easy in terms of the planes are nice. Uh, there's no like airport waiting time because you're flying, you know, big mm -hmm. private planes. And, you know, you land, you get right on a bus, you get right to a hotel, but you fly out after games. That's what people don't, as a rule, you fly out after a game. So if you finish a game at 10 o'clock somewhere and you're heading east, you're, lo you're, you're losing time. So, you know, if it's a two hour flight, you're on the plane, let's say it's 1130, it's 130, you're landing in a different time zone, it's 330 in the morning. And the next yeah. day you may have, you may have a, you know, uh, Yes, yeah, so whenever you fly east, you're losing hours sleep. Yeah. yeah, so you may, you, but you may, you may have an optional shoot around at eleven. I went to all those. I just think, as as head strength and conditioning, my job is I should be everywhere the players are all the time, and so you go to all those. Um, so it takes a toll. But I like I like the road. I like the job. Great organization. Great people to work with. It was, yeah, that's. that's so I mean, check, what, check the what box. What kind of things do you do, Gunnar, to like keep you kind of energized? Do you have like, are you, I'm guessing you're very routine led? So sure, big time. Yeah. I mean, like down to the second. It's crazy. But I love it. I, I, you know, sometimes I want to pump the brakes, but I find the time to do that. Um, stuff I do for fun. That's the question. What do you do for fun? I don't know. I feel like everything I do is fun. <laughs> I'm not looking for a fun. I just, when I got home today to, to talk to you, which I was fired up about. Uh, I went upstairs and my son is, is in his room. And I said, Hey, I have this event to go to tonight with a client. And I said, Hey, when I'm done with this, I'm going to have an hour before I have to shower. I'm going to kick your little ass and kick ball. And he's, <laughs> he's five. And he goes, I will beat you. And I said, I'll see you a little bit, pal. So <laughs> I, I'll go play kickball with him after the backyard. I love that kind of stuff. That's all I need. Yeah, well, it's a nice life. I mean, I think we're so lucky. I mean, I think being a personal trainer, I do think it's like the best job in the world. I think it's so cool. We get to hang out with people. Far away. They, we get to like have an effect on other people's lives while they're actually listening to us. And usually the people are pretty successful, <laughs> you know, and, and like they get to, I find it amazing. I never, um, I remember one of the things I got taught very early on when I did my very first qualifications, uh, I think I was charging like, twenty dollars an hour or something in australia you know nothing but the guy saying every minute you're earning like 50 cents or a dollar a minute every minute and that kind of stayed with me and now when i think obviously i'm charging more than that now but i'm like you know whatever it may be and think god every minute i'm getting paid by this person for me to offer them value and i never forget that and it's like it keeps you humble but it also just reminds you how fucking lucky you are just to so i was just gonna interrupt before and i and i checked interrupt myself me whenever you want it's fine. no 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 but i was gonna say and I think with that great life, cool life, best job comes the responsibility of making sure you're bringing something of value to the person because they are paying you. It is a transactional relationship yeah. and you have to honor your side of it. And if you don't, then, then you're a dirtbag. And, and if you don't believe that, then you're as stupid as most people think trainers are anyway. And <laughs> that's true. You know, but you do you ha you 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 owe them you don't have to just be there you owe them to stay on them sometimes when i have somebody who's either phoning it in or on their phone or hung over like you don't think i want to look up and at the big giant tv and catch all the scores going across the bottom of espn because but, but uh, it's a little game i play don't look at it don't look at it don't look at it and I stay on them because that's what I'm there for. That's my job. I can look at the TV when I leave or when they leave, or I, I just feel like you have to deliver that. You wouldn't want this in any other service industry, right? You wouldn't want your, your physician, right, to be checking you going, oh, shit, look at that. The Dodgers won today. Like, that's just not how you want to have that. You don't want your, your, your server in a restaurant to treat you that way. Any service industry, it's it's – it's very noticeable when they're pouring their energy into you, the paying client. And I want to be on the other end of that. When See, those Gunner, clients saying are this, this is why I think actually now is a great time to be a trainer, because even though there's lots of trainers out there, I think so many are not doing it well. They, they, they get distracted too easily. They're focusing too much on their own body, their own looks, rather than actually studying more and serving. 
I think now if you're if you get into the industry and just really focus on just being really good, it's actually quite easy to make your way up because so many people are doing it wrong. Me too, which is why when that guy said that to me that time, yeah. eight years ago, I was like, what are you talking about? It's, this is a cakewalk for you. If you will buckle down and, and push, you could destroy this industry. I've given you entree into the whole thing, not just clients and a top-notch facility where I'm moving equipment in and out all the time, but uh, I've got brands and people like, dude, I'm, I'm, it's on a tee for you. Come on. No, people and, would kill for that opportunity. After like being a trainer for twenty years, they'd kill to work under you briefly. You know what I mean? They, but, I guess but I don't even have it be. Uh, I don't even have it be under me. To me, it's always alongside me. Yeah, it's not like we have to be equals in this. I, I'm not trying to be your mentor, or your nanny, or any of those things. I want you to do this with me. If you've been in this industry for five, seven, eight, whatever it is, obviously, if it's your brand new, then I would have to take on a different role if I were to even take it on. But if you've been in this for a minute. You have your thing. If you want me to tell you what I think of it, I will. You may not like it because I'm always going to be a straight shooter. But other than that, you have to, like, we're going at this together. I'm open to your ideas. But when you say we should do this, I will say, no, we shouldn't. And here's why. Because I've done it for this long and I've seen that movie and I, and I know how that ends up. And, it, and it's not going to benefit the gym. It's not going to benefit the clients. It's not going to benefit you. So let's not. I can't tell you how many times I've had trainers in my gym. You should raise your rates. I go, really? Tell me again about the brand you built. It's not about raising your rates and gouging and, and, and you know, get every dollar. That's not what it's about. It's about I'd rather have the same person come three, four, five times a week and see terrific results than raise their rates, have them come twice a week and not get the most out of it. But also, I mean, that is actually, you said you're, you know, not great at business, but that is great business because that's how you get a reputation. And a reputation is, is the basis of having a great business. Forget okay, money. But money is only one. Money, like income is one aspect of a business. But yeah, but remember, I, remember where I remember where I remember where I am. <laughs> the train out here, it's like. What does that guy earn? What does that guy have? What and, and you're like, well, LA is a funny it, place because also fame is a currency as well. Su super yeah. funny place, super funny place. In London, London, in the whole of England, I'm in central London, which is a little bubble compared to you know London. Very different. Like London is more similar to New York than it is to Glasgow or Manchester. It's a, you know it's very cosmopolitan, but um, it's not quite as wacky as LA. I'm but, coming out there next week. Hi. Mm -hmm. How come? Uh, I've got some work with a new company that, that is going to be pretty interesting and, and they're doing something big there. And they said, you have to be there for this. And I said, I could, I can't wait. Sounds going to be mysterious. great. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Hang on. <laughs> I'm a spy now. I love when people go, I can't tell you that. I go, are you a spy? <laughs> what do you, you can't tell me that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think, uh, probably similar. There are probably a lot of similarities with, clientele and and expectations of, of service being delivered at a certain price point there. yeah and 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 it's a, i mean london has in the last 10 years particularly the standard of training has gone up a lot um yeah there are similarities there's, there's a bit of a difference when it comes to celebrity and fame it's a bit british people see it as a little bit more naff than people in america right so yeah for sure um, so certain people don't go down well at all they just won't be impressed it's like like well, yeah, I don't want to name names, but it's, you know, like some people, are, some people are very famous, very down to earth with it. Some people are not so down to earth with it. The not so down to earth oh, yeah. ones don't really yeah. do that great in London because we take the piss out of them. Yeah, I've, I've met those people. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. you got to just the ones that are cool about it are the best. I love when yeah. they show up again. Like I said, the above title stars, when they walk into my gym by themselves and they drove themselves there i just yeah. like that's cool that's normal now it's one thing if you have a driver because and i used to train a guy big 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 time television guy not just on air but production and all that he had a driver because his rationale was my driver costs this much a year 
he drove from one thing to another thing to all day long. He could sit in the back, answer messages, make calls or nap. And he figured he could make five times that money in the course of the year. And that was a good investment. And I was like, I just love that he thought it through. He actually thought (laughs) numbers through instead of just, I need a driver. You know, it wasn't that at all. So I get that. But, but the people who show up on their own and I love those people. Great. Great to be around the bigger, the bigger, the ones that do that. Great. So what, what are your plans over the next few years? Like, do you, do you, are you still ambitious when it comes to, so you've kind of achieved everything I can think of really as a trainer. I mean, you really are, you're at the top of the game. So what, what is there for you to do? What excites you? In the industry? Uh, so, at some point I'd like to do a show, not just be a part of a show, but do a show that gets the message of fitness out there that shows how accessible, how doable, how reasonable it really can be. A show, do you uh, mean like an event or do you t- mean like, like a TV show? Ah, oh, TV show. Okay. Like a TV show. And I, and, and I think that's probably why I haven't had one because that's not really sexy showing people how doable it is. I think people, I think as a rule, like on TV, the, the train wreck gets more viewers than the happy ending kind of thing, or they, they, that might being, you know, Hey, look, there's a way to do this. Here's this training. Here's that training here. Um, I think that people go, yeah, I don't care. We don't care about that. And I think there's a way I could do it with someone else where we go around and say, this works. This is cool. This maybe not so much, but if you like it and you're consistent, you'll probably get some results. And I spoke to all the positive aspects and components of it versus just knocking stuff. Um, I think people would walk away from the show and go, I could do that. That's easy. I think, I think that would work. I think, I think people are so tired now of sensationalist extreme stuff and it's like it's people want real uh, results and honesty but i don't think the result has to be 300 pounds down to 150 pounds i'd like to show you know if the average if the average overweight person i think is is i don't remember now it's like 36 pounds or 29 pounds i think it's 36 pounds i'd like to show those people and and how we can help not just the weight loss. It's, the weight loss is a by, in my mind, it's a byproduct. Let's, let's, let's tweak the lifestyle. Let's tweak um, the habits. Let's get into the rhythms and, and find a way where you said, I can't do this. I, I don't have time. You do have time. Uh, you said you don't have kids. If you had told me before I had kids that I was going to be doing this, 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 I would have said zero chance I could do that. I, I do not have the time for that. And yet you do. You, you, you get it. up at three in the morning, for God's sake. That's why. <laughs> three forty-five. <laughs> three is crazy. Uh, but you, you do you do find the time and you make the time. And if you show people, look, here's a way for you to get that workout in. And I'm not talking about setting your alarm every 15 minutes at work and standing up and doing 10 squats. I mean, I get it. That's a cute article, but that's not what's going to take you from deconditioned to in great shape. Let's just call it. Yeah. So yeah. So that. Um, I'd like to do a bigger gym. I'd like to take my gym somewhere somehow and, and spread it out and have more and just more like a giant toy store of gym stuff. Uh, I love those. I like big space stuff. Would you ever, I mean, it's just you and is it Brian? Is it? I forgot some. Is it Brad? Yeah. Brad. Sorry, Brad. Sorry, Brad. Yeah. Just the two of us in there. Yeah. So have you ever had like a whole team under you, like a bigger team of now? It's a ball no, ache. Don't do it. I've done it. It's well, good. <laughs> you, you know, LA, you know enough about LA that parking wise alone, that's, that's its own shit show. So I, I couldn't. Or just managing yeah. a load of trainers is, um, makes you age very quickly. I'm sure. I, yeah. The I good ones go, get delusions of grandeur, then they leave and the bad ones oh. take ages and are, are not very good. So it's, uh, it's very hard yeah. to get a real solid team because if they're yeah, really I'm good, sure. they're ambitious and want to do their own thing. Yeah, 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 and and maybe you get them. They they're past that. I want to do my own thing, and they realize that what they do is really good, and they don't want the headaches of running their own thing. And then and you kind of bring them back in. I w- I would do that. Yeah, yeah, that's, like that's an ex- like like an expendables of a gym. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right, gonna yeah. can we just f- finish off just the last couple of minutes? 
final sure. tips for people listening, coaches, gym, well, coaches in particular, personal trainers, let's say they've been doing it for 10 years and they're a little bit stuck in a rut. They've got the regular clients, they've, they've got the regular prices, but they're getting a bit like, oh, what next? What's your advice on to how to keep the excitement of being a trainer? I mean, that's that, you know, wake up and express gratitude and recognize that you're just so lucky to be in this job. It is, you are so lucky that you're not punching a clock and having someone lord over your every movement and, you know, rain down on you when you make a mistake. And there are so many ways and, and you're in control of your schedule. Maybe mix up your schedule. Maybe, maybe take a couple mornings and pull back and, and push into the evenings or maybe go the other way cut your evening short and start earlier in the morning and, and, and find time to, I used to train this guy years ago and he would say, he said one day to me, he said, I had the best day today. And I said, what'd you do? And he said, I didn't go to work. I go, Ooh, okay. Risky. And he said, I got a haircut. I got a manicure and I went shopping and I had lunch with a friend and now I'm seeing you. And I said, wow, that's a great day. He said, I took a swim in Lake Scott and I go, that's just such a funny way, you know, third person yourself. Right? But I think if, if you take a swim in Lake U, you know, maybe yeah. get in in the morning and then take an afternoon where or take two or take two a week for a month, whether it's take a walk with a spouse, whether it's sit in a hammock, whatever your thing is, or bury yourself in a book or look at a whole nother kind of training. If you're, if you're an SNC coach, look into like, you know, body weight training, mobility work. Um, if you're if you're a Pilates person and you're just you've had it up to here, yeah. uh, you know, maybe get into some kettlebell work or yeah, do or some heavy bench some, press for a while. <laughs> yeah, some only lifting, right? Yeah. Anything. And I try to hit all of those. I mean, if you saw who I follow on Instagram, you'd be like, "That's weird," uh, because I think you see so many good things and and you you pull and it's a business of poaching and we pull and we poach and then we piece together. But, it, but it's linked when, when you're grateful, I think, for your situation. And I think actually quitting and then doing a shit job for a couple of weeks will make you realize how amazing being a trainer is. Oh, but I then can't also become humble because you realize it's like we don't know anything. We don't know that much. It's all still changing. And you, you become less kind of, you know, ego driven, dogmatic about, no, I know about weight training. It's all about weight training. You become more open, like actually, Maybe there is a role for Zumba. Maybe there's a role for this. Or maybe, you know, you don't go so judgmental, which is quite easy of younger trainers. They go like, oh, that's, you know, CrossFit's terrible. Everyone gets injured. It's like, well, yeah, I get that. But there are some positives to it. Tons. Tons. <laughs> yeah. Just to say it's all and shit because pull-ups are a bit weird is a bit, yeah. it's a bit basic. Uh, it's, it's, a lot, it's very basic. But also those people end up um, prematurely shorting their careers. Yeah. You, you know, and, and it's like, you shoot yourself in the foot. You're going to paint yourself right into a corner. And you're going to be sitting over there with your squat rack. And I'm, I'm a big fan of squat racks, but if that's all you've got, well, I can make it work. No, you can. Sure. But then you're asking people to come to you and pay you for you and your squat rack. You got to branch out and remember you're there to serve. You want to prevent you. You want to present them with everything there is in the business. I'm not saying you have to go buy every single thing, but you should be conversational on, on all those things we just touched on, right? Pilates, only lifting, CrossFit, uh, yoga, mobility work, body weight training. You should be able to be at least conversational. And, and I'll say uh, that I don't know. I did that for a little while. And I would even say look at martial arts, look at distance running, um, look at tough mutters, look at – mountain biking. There's so many cool things. Whenever I travel, I try to do something new, something different. I'll hire a trainer in a place. I'll try different gyms. I'll try different classes. There are so many things out there that you, that'll just reignite your passion for this. And I think trainers should do that. You should go train with somebody new. You I, should train I love with that another trainer. Advice. What's nice about that advice, it also goes against, quite, which I'm pleased about, quite modern fitness marketing advice which is to find a niche like be the kettlebell guy or be the glute guy or be this guy and then just do a facebook advert and be the, be the be the specialist in that little area that's the kind you're of gonna, common marketing advice nowadays and it's terrible it's like you're gonna be the lonely guys yeah you're exactly be. but it's yes i can understand how you can be like 
the number one person for kettlebells. But it's like, really? It's just like, is, why, is why, that a thing? then what? <laughs> is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of, that is modern advice. I know you're not no, but, massively involved in this marketing stuff. No, but, I know, but but, yeah. but what do you? But what comes with that? Is there like a certificate? Because if we want certificates, let me go back to the gym and get. I told you, I got a, I got a notebook. I took this one and this one. And you're like, all right, I don't even remember what I. Took, no, it's but- it's reassuring. Just be good, people listening. Just just op- keep your mind open. Do what Gunna does. <laughs> keep try to t- try different things. Try yeah. different things. I my wife takes uh, Pilates out here, and she had the instructor come over to the house the other night with her husband. For I mean, it ended up being like a. a sort of a business, you know, how do we grow our business for both of us talking kind of thing. But it was a nice dinner with, you know, two couples having a nice dinner. And then my wife said, babe, you should come take a class. And they all kind of, you, I, I caught them. They were about to go, oh, he would. And I go like this, I'd love to. And they went, you would? And I said, yeah. And then the girl said, I'd love to come train with you too. I said, let's do it. So we will do that and it will be fun. Yeah. I don't know that I've done Pilates before. I don't know that it's my jam. I don't know that I could stick to it. I don't know that I'll feel the way I want to feel, but will I do it? Yes, I'll do it. I started running last Thanksgiving. Um, that's the third Thursday in September, in November for you British people. Uh, <laughs> <Thank> uh, <laughs> and, and, and I hadn't run in years and I thought I got to just mix it up. I, I've been, I've been riding a bike and I was like, I knew I was phoning it in on the bike and I would even set like a Tabata thing where I'm up, I'm down, I'm up, I'm down. I still, you know, when I'm down, I'm on the phone and then I'm up and I cheated it seven seconds kind of thing. And I thought I need something. I need to be more accountable. So I started running. Oh, I like how I look. I like how I feel. It's hard. It's way harder. Don't think I'm not counting the days till Thanksgiving when I can (laughs) say did that for a year and Maybe I'll stay with it. I don't know. But but you got to try. And I knew I didn't want to do it. I knew I didn't want to do it. And I said, Thanksgiving, you go today. And I went. And I've stuck with it every day. No, it's fine. So I, I got into gymnastics two years ago, which was a huge mistake. Because I realized yeah. I'm a bit too old to take up gymnastics from scratch. Uh, got all kinds of uh, injuries. <laughs> I took, it in, I took it in college. And nothing but respect for those people. It's amazing. No, right? It's yeah. amazing. And the body control and how you feel. And you're like, that's going to rip my shoulder out. But what they can do with their bodies, it was, and it was fun. Yeah. Dan Miller was the coach at Duke when I took it. The fact that I, you know, I don't remember that many people from back then, but it was just had a, had a tremendous impact on me as a, as a young person getting in tune with their body. The balls of you to do it at this age. Good for you. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't, you know, wow. you haven't seen the videos. I said, I did post oh, yeah. one video of Instagram, me doing a front flip landing completely on my face. I don't yeah. know if you saw that. <laughs> no, but but that's I could see myself. Uh, I'm yeah, right there with you. But yeah, humbling. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All those things. That's cool. And then you go back to do some things that you did when you were younger and you realize I, I got on my son's skateboard the other day. I used to compete in skateboarding. I was like, I was the skateboard guy. And I got on it and I was like, I could easily break my wrist. Easily. <laughs> easily. And I was like, come on, it's a little part of a basketball court. I thought this could end bad. And I played with it for a minute and I thought if I wanted to get back into it, I would take all the pads and then like extra pads. Well, you can't get into it. I mean, I'm a bit of a, uh, I'm a bit of a wimp nowadays. I used to do quite crazy things when I was younger, but I don't, I've had so many injuries from being stupid sports and, you know, I've competed in martial arts and stuff. The idea now of like breaking a leg and being off work for six months doesn't really appeal to me. So I I kind of tone in my training and I'm not a model. I'm not an actor. I don't need to look amazing i just want to function well and i want yeah. to be able to do the shit i can do now when i'm like 70 so. right you're like i i the whole break my leg and be out of that can't happen that's just not yeah. that cannot happen i'm with you on that yeah. yeah all right on that note people listening don't hurt yourself try and be right. like gunner he's very wise <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you are <laughs> no mate thank you so much for giving you thank you so much time really pleasure talking with you today thank you i don't feel bad inspiration really oh thank you i I don't feel bad that we pushed it back to later now knowing how late you go to bed yeah it's just like what time is it in england it's 11 15 p.m in england this is like yeah gonna have dinner in a minute easy happy hour (laughs) (laughs) yeah right all right thank you so much
Thank, Thank you, so you much. very much. I appreciate it. Terrific talking to you. All right. I'll, talk. I'll give you a shout in a couple of weeks when it comes out. I love it. I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever I'm supposed to do on my end on the tech side. To find out more about how we help coaches, instructors, and fitness entrepreneurs upskill and enjoy more success, please see danrobertsgroup.com or follow us on Instagram at the Dan Roberts Academy.